Hi, I'm Ruben Lara, and this is Intro to Graphic Novel Coloring for Digital Artists. In this course, I'll be showing you some basic tools and production methods to colorize black and white line art in the style of popular graphic novels. Now, you can feel free to use your own line art or download the provided uh, line art that we'll be using in the demonstration to follow along. And at the end of this course, you'll have produced a high-res, print-ready, colorized piece of art that's ready for various production uses. Now, I'll mainly be using Clip Studio Paint for this demonstration, but the concepts can really be applied to any digital painting software that features layer-based workflows. In fact, I'll occasionally be switching to Photoshop to show equivalent methods. Now, even though Photoshop is absolutely an essential and valuable piece of my uh, professional workflow, I hands down prefer to draw, paint, and color in Clip Studio Paint. It has an incredible brush engine, is super affordable, and even has a few tricks up its sleeve that even Photoshop doesn't have that really makes uh, coloring line art even faster. If you'd like to get an overview of Clip Studio Paint Basics, make sure to check out my free course called Clip Studio Paint Basics. Basics. There's a link right there in the description, and that'll get you up and running in no time. Now, I'm hoping you have uh, at least a basic knowledge of digital painting software, but either way, I will be clearly explaining where the specific tools and techni techniques can be found in both programs. All right, before we get started, uh, here's an example of the final image we'll be making. Now, I've used this technique so many times in client work, and I love it because it's non-destructive, it's consistent, and it's easily adjustable, which means that it's easily art-directable. And that's a huge plus when dealing with clients that can potentially ask for lots of changes or variations. To break it down, as you can see here, each element contains a flats layer, uh, a color layer, and one layer dedicated to each aspect of traditional lighting. As you can see here, shadows, deep shadows, bounce light, highlights or key light, and then of course our specular lights. And because each one of these layers is an adjustment layer, in this case a curves adjustment, the intensity and color uh, of each attribute is totally adjustable and editable later. Lastly, the top folder contains a final effects pass. It's very easy to build, easy to edit, and more importantly, it's easy to follow. I've seen many colorists have files with so many layers that were edited organically, we might say haphazardly, that uh, at the end, even though the result is beautiful, finding the right layers to make changes to can really be a nightmare. So this method just keeps everything in its place without sacrificing creative flow. All right, can't wait to show you how it's done. Let's dive in.